South Africa is launching this week. Can you give me a bit of a background on how this company emerged and what it aims to achieve? The company, strange enough, dates back to uh, 1994 when uh, Verbatim, a Mitsubishi company, uh, started uh, a branch office in, in Johannesburg. It was a vision of our then uh, Vice President, uh, uh, Mr. Jürgen Fitz. Um, and uh, subsequent to that, it's been an incredible journey. We've obviously focused largely, and, and they, of course the, the public will know verbatim as a, a product, uh, a media product, storage media. Um, in more recent times though, uh, there has been a, a move towards uh, utilizing the verbatim African footprint to further um, develop and take to market the Mitsubishi products outside of the verbatim fold. Three years ago, I was privileged enough to have um, access to the strategy to, to launch Klintsui on the African continent, unique to um, Japan uh, traditionally, uh, where it was uh, started or launched in 1984. Due to the growing need for, for, for clean drinking water in Africa and the water crisis that, that we are experiencing, we saw it as an opportunity to, to, to take to market. At the moment, as a verbatim structure, it was very difficult to take the market and that necessitated us to maybe reconsider our, our uh, business structures and as a result, we, uh, after lengthy negotiation and discussion, we formed Cross Africa Holdings. Cross Africa Holdings, of course, um, is positioned strategically in order that we could form substructures beneath that. Um, typically Cross Africa Water Solutions, um, which will then allow us to develop uh, the unique technologies, in this case uh, ultrafiltration, hollow fiber membrane, um, the Klinsui brand, um, to take to market in its various applications. It, it, it's, relative, it's very scalable, it's very broad, um, but uh, the future looks very exciting. Now the company seems to be increasingly looking to water solutions in South Africa. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Over the last three years, as we have evolved and developed uh, the product offering and we've learned a lot more about the market, it became very obvious to us that we needed, there was a great application. There was a need to really address uh, the commercial market, possibly some parts of the industrial market, um, certainly even um, sort of uh, com uh, um, home domestic applications and with that we worked very closely with uh, Mitsubishi Rayon Company um, and to develop a product more geared towards a point of entry. Now your point of entry really suggests that uh, as the water is entering the, the, the home or the office environment or the restaurant for that matter, we're cleaning it at that point, at its, at its source into the establishment. Um, hence the, the product is known as the MPOE system um, and the POE referring to a point of entry. So Anthony, tell me a little bit more about why this is needed. Why is it actually an important thing for the South African market to have such a product? When we started looking at the Clean Sui product range, uh, what excited me about it was the fact that it's actually not a reverse osmosis uh, solution. It's an ultrafiltration solution. So it doesn't demineralize the water. And that for me was a huge plus. Then the second thing is the, the fact that that little technology bundle, whether it's big or small, irrespective of the application, there's a package of technologies in that little bundle. And it's the way that those technologies have been bundled together by the Clean Sui engineers in Japan that makes it so interesting. So you've got at least three different phases of filtration that take place. You get the ultrafiltration that takes place that removes all of your harmful substances, including bacteria. So that's a very significant element to this, but it doesn't demineralize it. Then you go through another phase of, of the process, which is an iron exchange, uh, basically a ceramics process, which removes your, your, your toxic metals, and that's also very significant. But it then goes through another phase of activated carbon. And it's that activated carbon that is so important because in South Africa, with our current state of, 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 of uh, infrastructure collapse, there's excessive chlorination taking place. Uh, and that excessive chlorination has got an unintended health consequence in the form of trihalomethane uh, generation, which of course is a carcinogenic, a well-known carcinogen. So what, what increasingly intrigued me was this little package of, of, of technology. And initially I was quite skeptical of these end of pipe applications, but they come in relatively uh, cheap. Uh, and, and, and the more we looked at that, you know, there, there, there is a potent little bundle of technology there. And then as I got involved more with Manny, I started learning about the marketing side of which I had very little knowledge. And then we started putting these ideas together.
And then at another level, I was working with other role players uh, because it's not only across Africa that's in the space now, there are other role players as well. So I started increasingly finding myself in a, in a position where I'm bridging between different technologies. So then the question was, if, are we seeing a disruption taking place here? And as we started understanding that, we actually are seeing disruption. Once you start seeing disruption, you start seeing the emergence of new, new, new packages of technologies where you put technology A together with technology B and technology C and bring that together and then underpin that with a unique marketing strategy and in particular a rental type of model as opposed to a, an outright purchase kind of model. Looking at the applications of the system, when will we expect to see it rolled out and actually applied in companies around South Africa? Right now we have a prototype on offer. We'll be unveiling it now on the 3rd of November at the Cross Africa Water Solutions launch. Um, it will be open to the public. Um, we will then probably look for a, a, a site uh, where we can uh, do some trials on it. We have uh, membranes coming into the country shortly and we will then be rolling out a, a, a production line. Uh, we, we are partnering with uh, SA Water, a uh, Bitvest company, to um, develop the, the, the product. We believe that the, the production will ramp up in 2017 considerably. Um, and of course, very important for us now is, is, is to, to, to meet the de deadline of the completing the production of the prototype before the close of the year. And we expect we will be taking some orders very, very soon on this product. Now, can you tell me a little bit more about how we can see the savings that could emerge from this? I mean, is it too early to quantify the possibilities this product could have? Within the broad aspect, uh, we, we are sitting in a big drought at the moment. So if you just take, for example, in Gauteng, the expectation is that everyone has to use 15% less water. Now, the question is, what happens if you happen to be a, a, a beverage um, a manufacturer where there's a 100% correlation between a litre of water and a litre of product that you sell. You're going to have a 15% reduction in your revenues. That's an important element. There's job, jobs related there. What happens if you're in the laundry business where you use millions of litres of water to wash, uh, to wash laundry for hotels or hospitals, etc.? How do you start recycling that? So it's in that space where we're starting to go, and I can give you the numbers if you want to know the size of the market. South Africa has got 48 billion cubic meters of water on an annual average. That's the total water resource we have. That's the water in all, the, in all of our rivers. We've stored 38 billion liters in our dams, but we need about 62 to 63 billion liters by 2035. So the difference between 38 and 63, that's the size of the recycling market. So that's the size of the space that the, that the overall cross Africa technology package is going to be going into. So it's not only about clean sewage, it's also about other products that are, in, that, that, that are going to be involved in the recycling, the recapture, the reharvesting of that water. And in conclusion, it is my professional opinion that we're moving into a situation in South Africa where uh, we're going to see what I call a dual stream reticulation economy emerging. And that dual stream reticulation means that water of different quality, a different price, different pressure uh, uh, is going to be used for different purposes and different times and different places. So that recycling economy, that is actually where the revolution is taking place at the moment now. And there are not too many players in that space right now. There are a couple of loose little molecules that are floating around that space, but they haven't yet coalesced into, into, you know, into bigger entities. And that's the role that I'm playing, bringing those things together.